Greetings YouTube. Today I'm going to do, discuss one of the most fantastic fantasy films made in the 20th century, Princess Bride. The part of the structure of this film is part of its charm. It starts out as a story. A grandfather telling a story to his grandson. The same story that he told his son, this boy's father. And it's that simple, quiet beginning. A boy homesick, his grandfather reading him a story. That pulls you in. Now the story would be fine without it. But this additional element, this portal, if you will, into the world that is the Princess Bride, makes it magic. It also doesn't hurt that they have an absolutely incredible cast here. Mandy Patinkin, uh, Carrie Ewells, uh, uh, Wright, I can't remember her last name, her first name, um, Under the Giant. I mean, these are just incredibly perfect castings. They fit their roles to a T. I can remember a reviewer um, back in 1987, uh, when the film was released, commenting that he that uh, he couldn't decide if Rules or Wright was uh, better looking, was prettier, and he was right. They were equally as charming. They really did make a wonderful on-screen couple, the perfect prince and princess, the dashing hero and the maiden. It was a ma match made in cinematic heaven. Now, I never really considered the fact that this had been directed by Rob Reiner. I mean, I knew it, but it really hadn't sunk in at all. But when I watched this again last weekend, I watched it with the commentary track, and uh, this is the commentary track done by Rob Reiner. There is also an additional commentary track on here, which I haven't listened to yet, which is from uh, Golden, the, uh, the author, which is... Uh, amazing. It's very rare for an author to get involved in uh, the production of a film to this level. So I'll definitely be watching this film again to listen to that uh, comic track as well. But this was Reiner's second movie. And his first movie was Spinal Tap. Now, Spinal Tap is a classic film. It is a wonderful piece of satire on the heavy metal, move, uh, heavy metal music movement of the 80s. Uh, absolutely no perfect. Um, completely over the top and wonderful in every way, shape, and form. But would you hand this property to the guy that directed Spinal Tap? To me that was just a smidge of a gamble, but it paid off in a big way. Um, the casting was perfect. The, 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 the scenes were all done in England, so it had a wonderful sense of authenticity. Um, the costuming was well done. It was a mishmash of different periods. This film does not take place in any one time period. Um, for example, they comment about the fact that the dread pirate, pirate Robert had uh, acquired um, a poison from Australia. Australia didn't exist as a place called Australia at the time that this film would have been, that this story would have been told. Um, but who cares? Uh, it, it, it was a mishmash, it was anachronistic, and it didn't matter because it was all wonderful. Um, Billy Crystal as Miracle Max. I had I heard a reviewer once comment that it was like a cartoon had been thrust into the middle of the movie for your entertainment, and it was. It was so charming. There isn't a scene in this film that I think falls flat. They all mesh so well. It was refreshing, and it was light. It was a PG movie. You know, it's not PG-13, it's not R-rated. It's refreshing in that regard. But there's still daring do. There's still adventure. There's still two of the greatest sword fighting scenes ever done, flat out. Now, the first one, of course, between the Dread Pirate Robert and Inigo, Montoyo was great because it's two great swordsmen fighting each other. Two of the best swordsmen in the world, at least the fantasy world. Um, 
at the top of their game. And of course, the second one, being when he finally gets revenge on the Six Finger Man, isn't as interesting. The choreography isn't nearly as good. Um, but there's much more of an emotional impact. You care more about that second fight. Because you know the first fight, while fun, is just a pass-through. The dread pirate Robert is on his way to go do something. This is not the main focus of the film. But that second fight, that second fight is a thing of beauty. And it has my favorite line from the entire world. Offer me anything. Offer me my heart's desire and more. Anything you want. I want my father back, you son of a bitch. It still gives me chills, even though I'm saying it now. And Manny Patinkin delivered it with every ounce of conviction that that would have been said by a man that had spent 20 years looking for the man that killed his father. And Andre the Giant is wonderful. I am so glad he made this movie so we had footage of him being this heroic figure in this fantasy world. Fazzini is devious and warped and twisted and bizarre and funny as all get out. And as he laughs his way to death, who didn't love it? And Robin Wright is beautiful. A little on the frail side, I thought. She didn't wasn't as proactive as I would have preferred a female character to be. Yes, I know she's supposed to be playing a character that was a, essentially a princess or a, um, you know, a delicate maiden of some variety, but I think she could have stepped up her game a little and been in the middle and a little more proactive in, in some of the scenes. But that's just me. Maybe it's the strong feminist leanings I have. But this movie was magic. I've seen it a dozen times, and I've enjoyed it every time. And I enjoyed it last weekend when I watched it with the commentary, and I get to listen to uh, Rob Reiner talk about what they had to go through to make it. And they pulled this off on a budget of $16 million. In 1987, even then, that was $16 million. That's a really small budget. That doesn't even pay for the um, for half of the role that's, that Johnny Depp's going to play in the next Pirates of the Caribbean. Heck, there are some sets out there that cost more than that. And yet they were able to pull off this entire film on that budget, create a classic, something that can be enjoyed literally by audiences of all ages, from 8 to 80, and everything in between. So if you haven't seen Princess Bride, correct that now and go see it. And if you have seen it, watch it again, listen to the commentary track. And if you've listened to the, the, the commentary track by the author, tell me, how was it? I'm looking forward to hearing it. But The Princess Bride is a beautiful film. It's fun, it's adventurous, it's heartwarming, it's romantic, it's funny. It is in its very essence, the quintessential definition, fantasy. <laughs>